Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be game two, blah, blah, game two between Monk and Dim. Monk up a game. Bottom right in corner, we have Dim starting up, at, starting as the yellow Terran. I think he's playing for a bit of anger and pride and other things. Monk starting a bottom left in corner is the midnight blue Protoss. This is on Vermeer, which four player map, there's a lot of darkness. A lot of things can happen out in the darkness. And we got a player like Monk who... Blind Monk's a meme, but I'm not sure that I can tie it entirely into a storyline here. The Blind Monk, but anyway. Regardless, if I was Dim, I would just two-fac it. That is what I would do for the next two games. Just go straight up two-factory. Don't give Monk an opportunity to do any sort of craziness and go for dropping exp expos that you have to hunt down all over the map. Monk, I will say, if he... he it's one of those fist shaking things. You can't keep getting away with it, but I actually like his aggressive style of play, both economically and micro. How, how, what's the opposite? You got economic aggression and you've got macro, because you've got army aggression where it's like you're just building a large army and shoving it at your opponent. Timing aggression, it's not exactly right. I digress though, point being, I think Monk could go far, uh, could go far actually here in Hasu League, especially if people are playing safe and not punishing him. His particular style can do pretty well. Can, as uh, the old American Protoss Phenom Future used to say, he uh, he's one of those guys who hits above his weight class, where he can, because of his uh, more aggressive, crazy style of play, more often than not he can take matches. And speaking of it. The dreaded 12 Nexus, bottom left-hand corner. We'll see if this gets initially scouted by Dim. Dim has dropped down a barracks and a refinery. And again, if I was him, even in the dark, and it looks like he's... It, the luck of the Protoss, like the luck of the Irish. Are the Protoss Irish? My, that would make ire sense. The Irish. Uh, joke that I'm going to steal from CPL there. They've got a team, my life for Irish. Or the Irish? Yeah, anyway. Refinery does have three SCVs on it. We'll see if it pulls off once the hundred gas is there. Dim isn't going to scout this in time to have the recognition, so he does have Artosis level luck running for him right this second. Initial Marine is being constructed. SCV are pulling off gas, it looks like, for the first factory. That doesn't completely eliminate the possibility of two factory play, but at the very least, it looks like it's going to be a two gate follow follower follow up for Dim. Also, three gate follow up for Dim. Or sorry, for, yeah, for Monk. Also, what's up to Maraxis slash Rancor out in Streamland? Pylon being dropped on the front. So m the way Monk is playing this, he's going to have a whole lot of units very, very rapidly to potentially counter units. They're most likely going to have to be Zealots because he's not dropped a cybernetic score. That's really going to test the micro of Dim. Dim just now is going to walk forward and scout this. Two Marines have been constructed. Third Marine has not been produced. He's grabbing his natural expansion. And unfortunately, the way things play out from here, the way I would look at it from him, it's kind of like, ah, we're just going to go for expansion. And he's already got the SCV in position. Let's see. He is building an initial vulture. Zealot working against that SCV. Because of the lack of gas, though, the lack of forge and the vulture follow-up, it is very possible that Dim could strike a lot of damage with an initial Vulture Harass. Looks like he's tacking on a factory instead. That is unfortunate because it is going to be nothing but Zealots with the lack of cybernetic score here. And another probe making its way up a right-hand corner, running away from that SCV. Is he going to go try to plant another Nexus already? Still no cybernetic score. We're, we're approaching the five-minute mark and still no cybernetic score, nothing but Zealots. Yeah, and a Nexus top right, but the SCV has followed this probe all the way to the north. Zealot getting blockaded away from that natural expansion at least has confirmation information, and the SCV isn't going to see it. It's going to follow that probe to the top right. I wonder if it's going to question, okay, you know what? You sent that, but Monk moving three more Zealots towards the front. This is kind of an interesting timing here because the machine shop was dropped, mines are researching, but there's no siege tank. Three marines in the bunker. The vulture will have infinite damage versus the zealot in open field, but not necessarily when it's boxed into a corner. So maybe with some SCV repair, these zealots storming in 
will get annihilated, but otherwise the vulture is going to have to spend its time sneaking out. Yeah, able to sneak out that front exit. Cybernetic score only halfway finished at the halfway. Mark a simulator warping in. The zealots walking straight through. Avoiding the mines and everything else. Vulture speed being upgraded. Now that vulture is going to have to dive back. And Monk really punishing this. A mine drag, fortunately not into the SCV line. There's still more opportunity for that as the zealots are chasing along that line. The other zealots haven't joined the fray as of yet. They should. Trying to get a mine drag into vultures looks like they got a section of vulture. But if, as though Monk wasn't already going to be economically ahead running off the three nexus, the zealots hiding and waiting, now deciding to strike, pressing in. And these are units that Monk can afford to just expend. He's got all sorts of capital to work with. The three vultures, however, should be able to... But what this is doing is, is this is keeping the vultures off the front and allowing dragoons and potentially other blockades to make their way. The vultures, yeah, just don't have room to do their stereotypical micro. So dim down to a measly 24 workers. Vulture almost dying there. Vultures do have speed in mines now, but the dragoons are filling in. They should be able to blockade the front. I'm wondering if there's going to be a pylon wall top right to blockade that. Supply lead, robotic facility dropping. Let's see what this other building is down here. Forge as well. Big economic lead for Monk. Just doing Protoss things. The Vulture is scooting out, finding nothing. Going to go ahead and lay some mines. Let's go ahead and blockade and cover the front. A single Zealot fleeing to the north. An SCV making its way out. Now I'm wondering if Dim is just going to go for a quick third, just assuming that Monk has an additional base out in the field. I would not be shocked. Yes, fight fire with fire. Unfortunately for him, this Nexus has been up for quite some time. A dropship has been constructed. It's making its way to the north. Let's see if it still hasn't made its way up or right. The Dragoons have snuck through the lines. Monk look, is looking to go ahead and grab some territory and grab his fourth. He's still hunting some, for some vultures. Actually, he's left his front door open while a cannon is warping in. Fortunately, the timing of it all, Din isn't testing that front. Some photon cannons being dropped at each each expansion to help try to defend that. Two photon cannons to the upper right as well, and it has been nothing but vultures as far as a follow-up from Dim. Still upgrading siege tech, plus one weapons. Vultures, I'm looking for that dropship. So vultures have now found that base to the north, but this is just as the cam cannons are coming online. That's got to be frustrating. So there's a dropship waiting at the nine o'clock location. The vultures find the probes top right. Observer is making its way across. There are some units scooped up, but it looks like the Dragoons not engaging it at that location and actually moving right out of position, now spotting it. Trying to micro their way in and out, but unfortunately going to get wiped out with three vultures still inside, so a nullification of that drop. And a lot of capital lost as well. Three clock base up. However, it looks like Monk has not yet spotted that at the very least. Now clearing some mines mid-map. 79 supply lead in a fantastic economic position. Another vulture sneaking its way to the north. The third photon cannon being dropped. And a siege tank also sidling its way up that direction. However, behind this, Dim has started to play much, much more aggressively. He's got no siege tank defense on his front. And that is opening up the possibility for a front door breach. I like that he's starting to play more aggressive, recognizing that his opponent is playing very loose and off the cuff. It makes it for much more interesting matches, in my opinion. No fourth base as of yet. Pylon drop, siege tank up. The probes are not pulling off the line to engage. It looks like the Dragoons are going to make their way to the north to try to defend it. Actually, now thinking twice about it. Yeah, upon only seeing that single siege tank... This could be a game-ending maneuver right here, because that tank not in seed position. So it's two siege tanks versus this many dragoons, and that, and three marines in a bunker, that could be very quickly taken care of, even with that misfire rate on the high ground. SCV's pulling off the line. The siege tank is gone. Group repair on the bunker. The siege tank on the high ground gone. And Monk looks like he may have done it again. Got to do the uh, Heisenberg fist shake here. He can't keep getting away with it. Just a G given by Tim. It was a game. Monk advances. 
and unfortunately, uh, Dim is eliminated. Hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. We're going to move on to Group D. Thanks for listening.